This website uses a very, very unique and weird database to add notes and to store IP addresses. But, 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 but if I run a simple exploit right over here, then go back and refresh the page, you can see that eventually we run into an internal server error all of a sudden and the entire database is corrupted. Welcome to this video, ladies and gentlemen. Today, I'm going to show you a very weird vulnerability I found on a somewhat popular database. Make sure to check out the course. Link is in the description. I'm actively working, guys, on adding new stuff. The platform is about to be very, very good, and you can start find stuff there from the beginner level all the way to the intermediate and even expert level. So make sure to check it out. The link is in the description, and there is a very nice discount code for you guys. Now, without further ado, let's go straight into this video, and let me show you the weird world about this vulnerability, which I I have found a long time ago. This little website that I have in front of me is a simple note taking application. It's very simple. Let me show you. You enter the note and you click on add a note. And as you can see, it has been saved. If we take a look at the database, as you can see, it takes a log of our IP address as, as well as how many visits we have, probably to prevent us from visiting too fast or too much, and the notes which have been created on this application. It's very, very simple. But this database that it uses is written in JSON. So there is no SQL injection. So what even am I talking about? Well, let me show you how it looks like again. And if I run the attack again, as you can see, I run the attack and wait for a few seconds, maybe like three or four. It says the script has been completed. And if I refresh the page, you can see that there is an internal server error. But you might be wondering, how does even database look like at this point? What has happened? Well, let's take a look at the data. Oh, wow. As you can see, this red means that there is an issue with the database. And if we take a look, there is some bad stuff. Now, I'm going to tell you, I did not add a single note. As you can see here in the content, we still have only one note. No notes have been added, nor does my attack involve writing any notes. So let's take a, just a drawback for a second. The database that I'm talking about is TinyDB. And as you can see in the documentation, it says why not to use, which is very helpful. And here it says that you need advanced features like accesses from multiple processes or threads, e.g. when using Flask. And coincidentally enough, my website is written in Flask. Think about it. I actually found an issue and when I reported it this was not there at the moment so nobody knew about what I was going on so after I reported the issue which is right here you can actually read this in the description of this video I'll leave it there they actually had to add this but the issue is not fixed so I still see many many people use tiny DB on their websites and their websites are vulnerable and we really need to do something about it so if you have if you know someone who uses tiny DB well just let them know but let me actually go through the exploit right now to show you how it even works and it's very very simple it's just denial the service <laughs> attack. It just basically sends as many requests, which is obviously not a lot, before the database corrupts itself. Because this database cannot keep up with writing to it or reading to it from it or even updating it with too fast pacing. Because if we send multiple requests, as you can see, what I'm doing is I'm doing a 50 threads. I'm starting 50 different threads. I know it's simulated, but I'm still starting 50 simulated threads using Python. And what I'm doing is just having a while true loop that sends many requests and each of these 50 threads does this exact thing. And if we get 500, aka if the server crashes, we just break and this appears right here because each thread breaks, right? But this would even be probably faster because we have to wait for 50 threads to break first things first. So that's a problem. Now let's see how, mu how fast does it even take for this entire thing to just break itself. So Let's just go over here and just say print and let's just say response. Let's just say status code and then let's put response dot status code. So let's just see how fast is it even like going to crash the server. Now, the thing about it, you all you have to do is have to clear out the database. You just have to do that before this even works. Now, let's go over here. Let's see how how many requests is it even necessary to break this thing? Let's go three, two, one. Boom. I'm at starting the server. Here we go. Let's see how fast. And I'm I'm seeing some stuff. I'm seeing I'm just going to what I'm do. What I'm going to do is as soon as the 500 error code appears, that means the entire website is broken. So I'll just go if response.status code equals 200. 
So what I've done is I've just checked if the status code from the server is 200. And if it is, it will tell you the server is up. And as soon as it stops saying that, that means the server has gone down. Let's now rerun the exploit. Let me just run it again. Let's go. Let's see how many requests. And let's see, hopefully not. Wow, I didn't. Wow, wait, hold on. What? Ah, it's because I didn't reset the database. Hold on. My bad, my bad. Let's just see if the website works. Perfect. Let's now reset the attack. And let's see how many requests does it take to just shut this. Wow. Hold on. Let me count this. It's one, two, three, four, 16 requests. Just 16 requests was needed to just completely annihilate this website. And the only way to solve it is to just literally delete this part right here. Or if it's a complicated database, you really need to struggle. So if you want to, you can read this report. It is in the description down below. And after a while, you know, as you can see, I looked uh, the point about Flask is correct, though. But back when I de developed TinyDB, Flask did not have multi-threading. So it never crossed my mind that using TinyDB, TinyDB with Flask could cause any problems. But since v1 2018, Flask decided to turn on multi-threading. I've now updated the documentation to explicitly mention this fact. So I was single-handedly responsible for this for this appearing here. So the takeaway from this video is sometimes accidental bugs will happen, and this was one of the many accidental bugs I found. The point to take away from this video is to just keep trying, and maybe you'll get lucky with a very weird bug like this one. Make sure to check out the course as well. The link is in the description. I'm working on the platform actively to make it the best of the best for you guys to learn. Whether you're a beginner or someone who was already knowing about stuff, the link is in the description. Make sure to check it out. It's nothing too much. And there's a discount code as well there. So make sure to check it out. Link is in the description. As always, stay safe, stay safe, stay safe, stay responsible, and peace.